So now that we know that uh, our, our raptor can be 15 foot 2 inches long, and we know that our pitch or our slope is going to be 5 and 12, go over, five, over 12 and up 5. Now we know how long of a raptor we're going to need. Typically, you add 2 feet to the length to make sure that you have enough board to put on the very end of your, of your raptor called the raptor tail. So we're going to need a board 15-2 plus 2 is 16-2. That means we're probably going to have to have an 18-foot board to do the raptor for this particular house. Wouldn't that be 17-2? Yes, that's feet? true. It is The math is, is that way, but but when you buy boards from, from Home Depot or Lowe's or anywhere, they come in multiples of two. In other words, uh, and, and also on even numbers. So you can get an 8-foot board, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18-foot board. You don't find the 17 or the odd numbers uh, lengths in, in any of those stores. So we would have to buy, unfortunately, uh, even though we need 17 foot two, we need an 18 foot board. So, so having said that, I buy all the boards that I need now that I know how long. And the first thing I do with this Raptor is I'm going to crown it to make sure that uh, when you crown a board, you want to make sure, well, a board does one of three things. Either it will rise and fall, or it, if it has a dip, you turn it over, and then that becomes a crown. Or it has a bow to it, which it goes from right to left or left to right. That's a bow. Bows are easier to deal with because you can take those out pretty easily. Um, or it could have a twist in the board. The optimum is to to uh, find straight boards as straight as you can. You don't, they don't always come that way, but you always want to try to get those. If you don't get those boards, then you have to work with them. A crown always goes up because if you imagine that, when you put weight on that, then it's going to have a tendency to flatten out. If you have a dip in the board and you install it that way, then that's going to make that dip worse. So always put the crown up on all of your boards. So first thing I do with this board is I'm going to crown it. And whenever you come to a board, you want to make sure that um, you, you are going to be reading through the, the strength of the board. I'm going to turn it up this way, and you will look down one edge, down through here, and you see whether it goes up, or if it goes down, or if it has a bow to it, or even a twist. You can read all that. This one has a pretty handsome crown in it, and I'm going to keep put the crown up. So, the next step is to start at the very ridge. Yeah, I can see the crown over just on that side. I'm sorry. That, that curve would be the crown. Yes. You can see it even better this way. So when I install, install this raptor, I want to make sure that this, this, top, this part of the board is up. All right? So once I've established that, what I will do is I will make a mark on this board that says, that's my crown. It goes up. That way I never get confused. Anybody else can walk over and say, hey, where's the crown? Well, there it is. It's very well marked. So now I've got this, uh, this board in front of me. This is going to be my first rafter that I'm going to cut. I will cut this rafter uh, completely, and then I will make a duplicate to it. Uh, and once I establish that this, this rafter and its sister are, are going to meet my demands for the roof to, to be uh, proper, then I'll go ahead and use this one rafter to cut all the rest of my rafters so that this is one, my one pattern, my one template that I use for the rest of them. So it doesn't matter whether you work from left to right or right to left. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to, to either one of them. Uh, I am right-handed. For me, it's easier to work from my right to my left. And I also work on the bottom side of my rafter. That way I always keep the top side of my rafter away from me. So I'm going to start at the right. I'm going to start over here and just make an arbitrary point, uh, a mark, towards the, at, at, the, uh, at the far right side. It's almost arbitrary. If, if I make a mark down here, then I'm, I've got a lot of waste. I want to mark it down towards the end uh, pretty much as much as I can because you can see here there's some checks and some cracks in this board. So when I put my pitch cut, my top cut on it, then I'll be moving away from these cracks and checks. So, remembering what we talked about last, about our speed square, is we're going to go ahead and put this on the top side, okay? 
remember, it goes this way, it goes that way. And I'm going to be pivoting, but I want to have an angle, since this is the very top of my roof, I want the angle coming back towards me, to the inside of this, of this board. So this is not the proper angle, so I flip it over here. Now this is going to be the proper angle. I'm going to start on my pivot point, and then I'm going to pivot to the 5 on my scale. And on the speed square, then if you look at these scales, now this is the common scale, this is the scale that we're going to be using, the hip valley scale, now that's going to be a different scale, we'll have another conversation about that uh, later. But here's my pivot point, and I'm going to pivot until I see 5, be sure you're on the common scale. The hip valley scale, 5, is not the same location as on the common, so be sure that you pivot on the common scale, and then always mark on the inside. So what I'll do is put this on my beginning mark, and then I'll, I'll pivot to 5 on the common scale, remember not degrees, not on the hip valley, but on the common scale, and then I'm going to mark my inch side. I'll finish this one. Oops. So, this angle right here is called my pitch cut or my top cut. The rafter itself is going to be fitting, you'll have to use your imagination here, it's going to be sitting like this, okay? Okay. So that's the way the rafter is going to be going. Now what I'll do is, from this point right here, I'm going to measure over 15 foot 2 inches. I don't have no long enough board, so I'm going to pretend that I've come down here 15 foot 2 inches. I make a mark. I've come down this rafter, I've pretended that I came down 15 foot 2 inches, and I make my mark. So now, there's my top cut, I've come down the top of my rafter 15 foot 2 inches, and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So now I'm going to put my pivot point on my mark, I'm going to pivot until I see 5 on the common scale, and then I'm going to mark the inch side of him. Okay, so this mark right here, if I were to run perpendicular 9 degrees over here, then this would be technically about 14 feet to the center of the building. So this is the way the rafter is going to go. Now what I want to do is, I've got two more things to do this rafter. Uh, that I, um, One is called the rafter tail itself. And typically speaking, there's about 24 inches that um, that roofers or architects like to have uh, overhang on the roof. Let's see how much room I've left. So, so I'm going to go ahead and make this overhang just for the sake of the conversation a 16-inch overhang. It could be anything that the architect wants, and it will be on the plans. So what I'll do is I always measure from the bottom of my my rafter over the length of my rafter tail. There's 16 inches, okay? Because I have several different options on on what this cut is right here. Now, I've got one cut that the architects like, and this is called a square cut. That means from my 16-inch overhang, I'm just coming and, and, and cutting it square. So, the other cut, or another cut, is is a, a what they call a pitch cut, and that's going to be the same 512 parallel line with with the end of my of my, my building. So the way that I do that is I get to my starting point, I put my pivot on there, I pivot to 512 on the common scale, and then I'll go ahead and make this mark right through here. For, for the end of my rafter. Um, the, the rafter tail, the architect said I want to have 16 inches here, okay? That's measured from the bottom. If I were to measure that 16 inches from the top, that would work out magically if I had a plumb cut. You can see where 16 inches and 16 inches here, parallel lines. Mm -hmm. But if I were, if the architect wanted to have a square cut, 
and I measured my 16 inches from the top, then you can see where If I go with this, if I measure from the top and have a square cut, then now my overhang is only going to be 12 and a half inches. So that's why I always measure my raptor tails. I always measure that from the bottom because I can accommodate either a square cut or a plumb cut. Now here comes the tricky part, and this is kind of the advantage to this particular uh, space square that I have. Now, if you come a little closer here. here. <laughs> On this particular scale, you so, can see there it has all the roof pitches up to a 2012, and it gives you the number of degrees, the angle that that particular roof pitch is. So it looks like on a 412, it's 18 and a half degrees. Okay, ours is a 512, so that means it's 22 and a half degrees. So the way that correlates is. When I get on a 512 roof pitch or slope, then I can read my number of degrees straight across over here, and it is 22 and a half degrees. See it right in there? So here's, I'm on a 512, but then that translates to 22 and a half degrees. And that's why all of these guys right here, you know, even if it's a, 50, a 1512 pitch, that's 51 and a half degrees. So all the degrees are right here on this particular speed square. Not all of them have it, but that's why I like it. Now, the way this comes in handy is now I have to cut the magical, it's called a bird's beak or bird's mouth, okay? And I have to create, I'm going to exaggerate this, I have to create another cut right here so that it fits right on top of this wall. My parameters are this. I want to make sure that I have a 90 degree angle right here okay. Hold on. So, so when I'm cutting in this bird's mouth I want to make sure that I have a 90 degree angle here and furthermore I want to have this distance <laughs> three and one half inches the reason for that and I'll see if I can draw this these are two examples of if I have this cut less than three and a half if it's three inches then my, my seed cut's gonna come like this, and at three inches, it's gonna come back up that way, and that's what my, my raptor's gonna look like. It, it's gonna be coming up short here. If it's more than three and a half inches. And that's because the dimension lumber is three and a half inches wide. Yes, that wall is three and a half inches wide. It, unless it's a two by six wall, then it would be five and a half inches. So that's why I use the three and a half inches. If it's more than three and a half inches for this particular cut, then my raptor can look like this. So now you can see where here it's a little bit short and here it's a little bit long. So my sheet rock's going to come down like this, and then my other sheet rock's going to come up like this. So it's just going to be a, a difficult joint, and then technically this is the height of your ceiling is not going to be where the rest of the height is. So. Uh, I like to make this happen where I've got three and a half inches that comes through here. So, the so question cool. is, how do I do that? If if we think back to our uh, geometry, there's 180 80 degrees in a triangle. Mm -hmm. If I take away 90, that leaves me 90 degrees for these two angles. So if I know that this is, on my 512 pitch, it is 22 and a half degrees, that means if this is 22 and a half, then this is going to be the complement. This can be what's left over from the 90, which is 67 and a half degrees. So what I'll do is, now I, what I'll do is I come here, I've got... 22 and a half degrees on it right now. So I will go ahead and flatten this out, turn it straight over this way, and now what I want to do is I want to pivot to the 67 and a half degrees. There's 65, 66, 67 and a half degrees right there. And now this is three and a half degrees right there, so I'm going to slide this. Three and a half inches? Yes, ma'am. What did I say? Degrees. Degrees. <laughs> Close three and a half inches 
oops, there. So I make sure that I've got a good strong pivot point in contact. I've got my 67 and a half degrees right here and then I'm on three and a half inches. So those are the three things that I've got to have. And now this right here goes away. This is my seat cut. And now this is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. My, my rafter is, uh, my wall comes in right at this point. Okay. All right. So that's almost it. The last thing that I have to do, I, when I'm doing this, I'll go ahead and make a duplicate of this one after I cut it all out. Um, so now I have two of them. I'll take those two and I'll put them up on the roof. And then I look at my cuts. If my angles are good, if my angles are good on top of the wall, if at the at the um, the top cut or my pitch cut, if they if they fit good, then I'm ready. I think it looks good. Then what I have to do is I'll come down here since. I've got a ridge rafter It's going to come in here. What's a ridge rafter? A ridge rafter is is when the rafters come together like this, then there's one rafter that, that runs um, parallel with the foundation, and it runs perpendicular to all the common rafters that come in. And these rafters will set against that common rafter, or that ridge rafter, all the way down the line, and that's what keeps everything more stable. Um, that ridge rafter is uh, typically one and a half inches thick. And so what I have to do to accommodate that distance, I have to take half of that distance out of this one, uh, out of my template, and then half that distance out of, my, out of the sister, which means I'm taking three quarters of an inch out of here, three quarters of an inch out of here. So what I'll do is I'll measure three quarters of an inch, and then I'll get my speed square. I've got to create a parallel line here so now what I'm doing is I'm holding on my my 512 pitch and I can slide it up and back good contact 512 I slide it to my three quarters of an inch do the same thing here okay so now this is not my cut line. This one is right here. I do that on both of them, and, and then I can mark all of my rafters with this one template. I make sure that I've got the word template or marker, or this is the first one I ever cut. So uh, make sure that this is marked and not, not put up until you're finished. Okay.